Chapter 21 of Christian Liberty and Liberty of Conscience The liberty which Christ has purchased for believers under the gospel consists in their freedom from the guilt of sin, the condemning wrath of God, the rigor and curse of the law, and in their being delivered from this present evil world, bondage to Satan and dominion of sin, from the evil of afflictions, the fear and sting of death, the victory of the grave, and everlasting damnation. As also in their free access to God and their yielding obedience unto Him, not out of slavish fear, but a childlike love and willing mind, all which were common also to the believers under the law, for the substance of them. But under the New Testament, the liberty of Christians is further enlarged in their freedom from the yoke of ceremonial law, the whole legal administration of the covenant of grace to which the Jewish church was subjected, and in greater boldness of access to the throne of grace and in fuller communications of the free spirit of God that believers under the law did ordinarily partake of. Paragraph 2 God alone is the Lord of the conscience and has left it free from the doctrines and commandments of men, which are in anything contrary to his word, or not contained in it, so that to believe such doctrines, or to obey such commands out of conscience, is to betray true liberty of conscience, and the requiring of an implicit faith, and an absolute and blind obedience, is to destroy liberty of conscience, and reason also. Paragraph 3. They who upon pretense of Christian liberty do practice any sin or cherish any lust, as they do thereby pervert the main design of the grace of the gospel to their own destruction, so they wholly destroy the end of Christian liberty, which is that being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, we might serve the Lord without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. The end of chapter 21.